And now let's take you to the breaking news scene in Camarillo, the latest on the discovery of the body of missing firefighter Mike Herdman. In the area of the ongoing search for Mike Herdman, the Arcadia firefighter. The pilot and the crew flew over a rugged cliff area and noticed something in the terrain down below. Further investigation revealed what they had seen. Pilot Ken Mitchell had glanced out the window and seen it after flying over the same location multiple times during the search over the past seven days. What they had seen was a body. The air unit directed searchers to the area. It was difficult for them to get there. It was incredibly rough terrain. And even when they got close, the body was camouflaged within the terrain itself. An investigator from the medical examiner's office was flown to the scene, and the body was airlifted back here to the sheriff's air unit. The body was then transported to the medical examiner's office, where a positive confirmation through dental records was made that it was the victim, firefighter Mike Herdman, who we had been searching for for the past 10 days. Mike's body was located approximately three quarters of a mile and about 1,200 feet above where he was last seen in the Sespe River bottom. These pictures over here are an indication. This is one of my investigators in the exact location where the body was found. You can see by the terrain, it is incredibly rugged. The Sespe, the Sespe River is down below some 1,200 feet. So it was obviously a, a long hike up very, very difficult terrain. The family has been notified. And once again, our sympathies and our hearts go out to Mike Herdman's family, the public, and the fellow firefighters at Arcadia Fire Department. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. How's it been? It's undetermined pending an autopsy by the medical examiner. We'll, we'll, we'll look at everything. You know, the, the medical examiner will do a, an unbiased uh, review uh, to determine the cause of death. Did he have any visible sign of injury? Well, it's very, very rugged terrain, so he, you, would, you would imagine if someone was to fall in that area, the type of uh, injuries that would uh, be conducive to that type of falling through terrain and rock. It's, I really don't want to comment on that until the medical examiner finishes his examination. It's about three quarters of a mile up, pretty much up the side of this canyon right here. And again, about 1,200 feet from the river bottom below where, they, where he was last seen as he camped with Taylor Bears. The pilot and the crew had just dropped off uh, a search team down below in the river bottom once again. And they, he, the pilot just chose a particular area to go out and candidly said, I glanced out and I just saw something. And it just, it, it didn't look like it belonged in the terrain. And uh, they went back and actually had to make a couple circles. And the crew chief that was on, uh, on the flight actually couldn't even see it and they had to fly around a couple times to be able to identify and to be able to see that something was actually down there. It, it, it did not appear that he had been trapped. It appeared uh, that he was laying over some of, some of the terrain uh, and partially covered up by brush. And I'm sure you'll understand, out of respect for the family, I'm just going to avoid being too descriptive. There's just no need for that. Uh, well, one, one of my commanders um, who has uh, worked with them all week called them and, and talked to them, and I, I haven't talked to them about what their reaction was. We also called the assistant chief from Arcadia Fire Department to let them know. No, actually, we, we backed off the number of personnel that, that were there, but we had searchers and air units out there every day. Every day? Every day. And, and were you going to intensify that this weekend? Uh, not necessarily. We were probably going to continue at the reduced ongoing level we were at, absent some new information coming forward. And this area where the body was found, is not an area where searchers had actively been in that brush and those 
Now they had not been up that far up the canyon. It was, you know, as we evaluated where to search and what to do and the search and rescue professionals looked at that, they said, what are the chances that someone at night in bare feet and shorts would scale a 1200 foot mountain and it, the likelihood just wasn't that high and so the search was uh, focused in areas that there was a higher likelihood that he actually might be located. Is that something that you Well, well, you know, it's been an ongoing investigation. We've, we've been looking into it. We'll, we'll continue to ask questions. Um, candidly, I'm not sure if we'll ever get an answer because he's probably the only one that can answer those questions about why he'd go so far in the middle of the night like that. Well, is it human, I mean, is it possible barefoot with no gear to get that far? Uh, well, I, 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 I guess it is. I, I guess it is. Uh, no, there's no indication whatsoever that there's any foul play involved. It, well, I, the body was located 1,200. This is 1,200 feet above the Sespe River bottom. And they, were by the river. they were in, yeah, they were pretty much in the river bottom. So, as if you, and I apologize if we, we'd have a Google Earth there, you'd be able to see. There's two ways up into this canyon. One would be the river bottom down along here. You'd come along the front and traverse around this front area, where there's a canyon around the back side that you would have to go up a half a mile, three quarters of a mile up, up through very rugged terrain to come around the top and, and the back side of this cliff area. So, so he went up and then he fell? Uh, oh, we don't know. You don't know if he fell? Well, we don't, we don't, at this point, we don't know if he fell. We know where the body was located. We, we can't determine at this point, and maybe we'll be able to determine more after the autopsy is done exactly what happened. Is it below a cliff? It, it is, it's below, it's below this cliff right here. And this is about, about 100, 150, 200 foot cliff. So is it a possibility he climbed on top of the cliff and fell off at night? Yes, we don't know if that actually happened. Is there any sense of the timeline that, that whatever happened at that spot happened on Friday night, Saturday morning? It would seem to indicate that, yes. Nothing. Nothing else except the clothing he was wearing, which matched what was described to us that he was wearing when he ran out of camp. That was a, a pair of board shorts and what was the shirt? Black t-shirt. He was barefoot. He was barefoot, yes. Then everybody would let him in. Animal tracks, it's difficult to see the animal tracks. See, I talked to the, the investigators and the rescuers that went up there today, and they said it is so thick that they actually slip multiple times just trying to get to the scene. In the short time, the helicopter offloaded them and just getting over to where it was. And, and in total, it was that you have looked at 58 square miles and focused in on about six square miles worth of spots, different areas. Is that still happening? Yeah we, yeah, we focused on areas where we thought there was a higher likelihood that he would have left the Sespe area. That is, that's one of my investigators. We, we wanted to be able to show Media exactly firefighter where the body Mike was Herdman, found. 36 years old, his body now spotted and recovered from the Sespe wilderness in very a rough and steep terrain. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department says he was found about 1,200 feet above where he last was seen. That was somewhat of a surprise and out of the primary search area. This two weeks after he vanished on a hiking trip. Cause of death yet to be determined. No indications of foul play. A sad but now conclusive ending to the search for the missing firefighter from Arcadia.